Hey guys, we're back again with part three of our presentation and guided notes videos. So today we're going to start getting into energy transfer. Um, here's the here's the goals for this section. This is I broke it. Like I said, I cut it in half, um, but I wanted to keep the video shorter for you guys. But here is the the second half. I, I would call it of the whole presentation. So, we are going to learn about the energy processes known as photosynthesis and cellular respiration. We will be able to discuss the required components and byproducts of these two reactions. Um, in case you guys aren't sure, byproducts are kind of like um, the side effects of these reactions. So, it's basically what we get from it um, in regards to like... Photosynthesis, for example, you know, the byproduct of photosynthesis is, of course, oxygen that we use to breathe, which comes from the plants. So let's get into it. So this picture on the right here is a example of a energy pyramid. And each different color there on the pyramid is called a trophic level. And as you can see there on the bottom, our first trophic level is the primary producers, or just producers. Um, and as you can see there, that they get their energy from the sun, and they get nutrients or minerals from the decomposers who break down the dead organic matter. And they take those things, the, the energy from the sun, and the minerals, and water, and they are producing energy for themselves via photosynthesis and serve as a food source for the consumers. And you can see down there at the bottom that the producers start with 100% of their energy. Um, it's uh, kind of just showing you that at this level there's a full amount of energy that can be gained uh, by, that is being generated, I, sh I guess you could say, by these producers. So then we move up to the primary consumer. And those primary consumers would be like our caterpillar from the, the food chain example from earlier, from part two. And those caterpillars, when they eat those oak leaves, are only getting 10% of that energy that the producers um, developed and then it goes up to our tree creeper who ate the caterpillar and he only gets 1% uh, then we go up to the hawk and he gets 0.1% and then if we had something that was actively hunting and eating hawks maybe like a larger bird for example um, that would be the top of our energy pyramid and he would only get 0.01% of all of that energy. If uh, you're a bit of a math wizard, you might notice that it's going, it's kind of like 10% of each uh, level. So you go from 100%, you divide that by 10, and you get the 10%, you divide 10%, and by 10% again, and you get the 1%, and so on and so forth. Um, I don't like math, but you guys can you can do that basic division. You can see how it's kind of moving forward. So it shows there on the left that all these consumers, and even the producers, will die or, um, in some way. And the, produ and the decomposers, like we discussed, will break those things down into nutrients, return them to the soil, and the process will start over. And over here on the right, you can see that some of this energy is being lost as heat. So whenever we are doing anything with our bodies, um, you know, eating or running or picking up a rock outside to, to move it from wherever we want to move it to, um, we are using energy. And doing this, our bodies are generating heat. So running on the track, for example, you know, if you were to run around the track a few times, 
you're going to get, you know, hot. Uh, you're going to start sweating. You're going to start breathing heavier. Doing all these things, you are burning energy that your body has stored up through eating food. And because of this, your body is generating heat. So, you you know, you notice that you're, you're sweating, your face is getting red, you're... You're, you feel hot. You can feel the uh, your your face gets kind of flush. Um, humans, for example, we lose the majority of our body heat through the tops of our heads and our faces. Um, so that's kind of why you might notice, you know, whenever you run, the first thing you notice is your head feels hot or you're you're sweaty, and you notice it up there first. Uh, the same can be said for other living organisms. It may not, you know, come out of their the tops of their heads like like it does for humans, but whenever they're running around hunting or, um, you know, just trying to survive out in nature, they're losing energy as heat when they run around or you know do other animal things that animals do. They are losing energy as heat. So this pyramid kind of breaks that down in a easy to to see way, and that's why I included it here for you guys. Um, I thought it was pretty helpful, so I thought you guys might like it. Good, you know, a good visual thing is always nice for learning. So let's move on. So how do organisms get energy? Organisms get energy either by a process known as cellular respiration by consuming food like we do and other animals or a process called photosynthesis this is the one that plants do it's kind of the way that they make their own food uh, do you guys remember what we refer to um, organisms that can make their own food as you know we talked about an autotroph because you know it's an automatic process that they make their own food. Um, both of these processes take in materials and convert them into a usable form. So, you know, that's kind of saying, you know, we can't just look at a cheeseburger and eat it and get all that energy from eating a cheeseburger. There's a process to it. It's gotta be broken down into a form that our body can use. So let's go forward and look into that. We're going to start with photosynthesis. So plants use photosynthesis in order to get their energy. They take in energy from the sun and convert it inside the chlorophyll into sugar, which the plant can use as food. So do you guys remember earlier in Ms. Cunningham's class when you did your animal and plant cell models? If you chose to do a plant cell, you had to look at the chloroplast and the chlorophyll. So I know you guys know what those are, so don't try to trick me. Um, this is where the plants get their, their green color, and it's also where they make they convert the energy from the sun, and they convert it into sugar, and that's what let the plant, lets the plants grow and reproduce and as a result of that make oxygen for us to breathe. Uh, plants also absorb carbon dioxide also known as CO2. I wanted to include that in case you guys see that somewhere. Um, from the atmosphere and in combination with the energy from the sun make their food. So plants require carbon dioxide the same way that we require oxygen. Um, Plants also take in water through their roots and combine the energy of the sun with the hydrogen to create the food, create their food. So plants, um, they don't really need the oxygen that's in water. Um, and oxygen, as you can see, there is O2. So, you know, when we talk about water, some people will say H2O. The uh, oxygen comes from them breaking that that water molecule and so they just you know they release the oxygen back into the atmosphere and they keep the, the hydrogen to use um, and they use that to make energy so whenever they're done with the, 
the oxygen and they're just like, oh, well, we don't need the oxygen. We'll just, we'll just, you know, get rid of that and let all those animals have it. And those people that walk around, they can have the oxygen. We don't need them. So that's kind of the basics of photosynthesis. Um, I've got a picture coming up that kind of explains that in a, you know, a visual format if uh, that kind of didn't really make a lot of sense to you or kind of uh, I may have rambled on, but um, I'll break it down again soon. So if you guys had a problem there, we'll get to it. And here we are now. So as you can see in this easy picture, we've got our tomato plants. Uh, you may have some of these out in your garden. So the plant is taking in water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide. So all those arrows pointing to the plant means that it is being absorbed into the plant. It needs all of those things to function. So it's going to take that water and it's going to break down the water molecules and take that hydrogen and combine it with the energy from the sun and the carbon dioxide and it's going to make its food. It's going to make that sugar that it needs to grow and reproduce and survive and as a result since plants don't really need oxygen you can see there on the top left the oxygen is going away from the plant so it's it's letting oxygen like um, loose from the little pores in the leaves so it's giving us the oxygen and it's taking in the carbon dioxide that we produce when we breathe when we exhale when we exhale we release carbon dioxide and so those plants take it in and we've kind of uh, have a mutual relationship where we get the oxygen that we need and the plants get carbon dioxide that they need and the cycle of life can continue. So how do we get our energy? So humans, cats, dogs, and other living organi organisms are unable to use photosynthesis. So instead, we use a process called cellular respiration. Uh, the energy we gain from this process allows us to grow and survive. So we need energy to do things. Even sleeping requires energy. Because did you guys know that, you know, whenever you go through those growth spurts, whenever you're young and you get taller, uh, a lot of that happens when you're sleeping. And you need energy to, you know, grow bigger so your body can, uh, you know, produce more skin, produce more hair, produce all the things that we have. It requires energy to do those things. So cellular respiration. This process uses the oxygen we breathe to break down food molecules and convert them into energy for our body to function. Uh, cells need energy to function just like a car needs gas so and just like a car we burn off that energy during our daily lives even when we are sleeping like I said because we grow when we sleep um, our, our heart has to keep pumping when we're asleep so for our heart to pump we need energy and that's where that energy comes from and so while you're sleeping and your heart's still pumping you're losing energy um, you know, that comes out as heat, like from our trophic pyramid. And, you know, we have to constantly, we have to eat to keep that energy up so we can survive. So we've got a, a little example there. Um, I like cheeseburgers, so I use cheeseburger as an example. Um, for example, when we eat a cheeseburger, the protein in the meat and cheese can be broken down to help develop muscles and other tissues. So you guys know... Um, Coach Lau, for example, him and his big muscles. He has to eat a lot of protein to keep those muscles up. Because if he doesn't have enough protein, his muscles aren't going to be able to keep getting bigger and stay. And he's not going to be able to keep that muscle mass that he has. Um, the protein is common in meat and it's also common in cheese. So things like what we eat really determines what we are you know the saying you are what you eat so that's where all that comes from so the more um protein for example the more 
energy you could have devoted to helping develop muscles and other important tissues for your body. And here is a little breakdown of cellular respiration. See, it also has a cheeseburger in it. So we take in the oxygen or the air and glucose is a fancy word for sugar or um, basically the food we eat gets converted into things like glucose or fats that we use for energy that our, our body will store these things and you know when we need it it'll be like okay uh, we need some energy now so we got we gotta you know we've got to grow some more muscles or we gotta spend some energy to run away from this bear or whatever so your body's going to take that glucose or the sugar from the food that you ate and it's going to give you energy and so like this lady here for example she's running so whenever you're running you're exhaling so you're getting rid of that carbon dioxide and you're burning energy so you're losing heat energy you know you're running your heat's coming out of heat's you know just pouring off you you're sweating and that's where the water comes from you know sweat um sweat is a byproduct of expending energy and you know it also comes out in other various forms of waste you know like whenever you have to go to the bathroom you're losing water that is a byproduct of this process so this chart or not chart but this this diagram here is a pretty good and easy to follow representation of how cellular respiration works. And that brings us to the end of our little slideshow here. So the guided notes now should be complete. Um, we will, this should be Tuesdays, around Tuesday ish. So, um, like I told you guys in the breakdown video, I'm going to give you a little vague definition of biodiversity for our assignment on Wednesday. So you guys remember when we talked about um, biotic factors in the uh, first part here. Um, bio is present in the word biodiversity. Um, so that means... You guys remember that means living. So a living something. And then the second part of the word is diversity. And we all know what diversity means. You know, all the various different things, uh, plants, animals, people, everyone's diverse. Um, it basically means the differences or a variety of things. So I would... I'm going to tell you guys that the vague definition of biodiversity is like a variety of different life forms. So, you know, all the plants, all the animals, um, all those things that make an ecosystem function and be healthy. So kind of think about that a little bit. Maybe why do you guys think that biodiversity could be important? Um, that's all that's all the hits i'm going to give you guys for right now so i will see you guys later um if you have any questions about the notes please feel free to email me or leave a comment and i will get back to you guys so i will see you guys later stay safe and bye